K-Rock Mid Atlantic Rockabies. Welcome back to Behind the Bands. We are here with legendary Rhino Bucket. We have George and Brian Damage here uh, from Rhino Bucket. We're in White Marsh, Maryland. And uh, guys, thanks for being on Behind the Bands. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. Uh, the first thing I want to do is give you a, a birthday card from Mid Atlantic Rock Reviews uh, to, for a happy birthday. Thank you. And uh, ask if you might want to uh, take a quick peek there and then maybe. Uh, <laughs> Could you maybe tell folks a little bit about what the significance of the birthday is? Oh, uh, it was the release date of our first album back in 1990. I'm assuming. Yeah, it was 90. I, <laughs> I looked it up once. I put it on Facebook, and I haven't looked at it again. So I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it was the release date of the first album. So. Uh, uh, we had someone else who was doing our Facebook before, and they had just picked some generic date, like 1969 or something like that. And I was like, let's uh, let's do something a little bit more realistic, at least uh, so that can be applied correctly. So yeah, you guys are still kind of touring. Who's got mine, uh, the the CD a little bit? But uh, mm -hmm. there's something new coming out shortly. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a couple of things new. We've been working on a new uh, album for. Uh, like a new original song, full-length album, was going to come out in, uh, I would say, the summer of 2013. But in the meantime, we're releasing a live album that the original lineup had done back in 1990 at the Coconut Teaser. It's uh, we're going to release in Europe on January, I want to say 7th or 4th, and then a little bit later it'll be released here. Now you you mentioned you guys tour in Europe or releasing in Europe. You guys are pretty big in Europe. You just did a whole lot of dates over there. Is that correct? For the last album? I think music and well, I, think, I'm, I mean I, I don't know how you feel, Brian, but I, mean, I think I think hard rock music in general does better over there now compared to the climate that's here. And that's I'm not dissing on America at all. I mean I love it, but just it's kind of shifted here. And a lot of people are struggling to stay business, and I think they have their uh, you know, with the summer festivals and all the club tour you can do and, and what have you, uh, there just seems to be a stronger foothold uh, across many generations of people that are still willing to, you know, put on the jean vest and go out and rock out with, you know, their best favorite bands. Yeah, you can play a club in Germany like on Monday night and be packed. Yeah. It'd be like a Friday night. Got mine. My favorite tune is the title track. I just keep playing that one over and over again. Is there one that is you would call your biggest success on that album? One the fans like most when you play it live? Is it one song that jumps out of that album? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're in this weird place where um, actually when we go to Europe, we're going to do the first album in its entirety in order, and, uh, and then fill out the rest of the uh, 75, 90 minutes with uh, songs selected from albums. But we're in this weird place where uh, we always want to play more songs from every album, especially new albums, because we're excited about it and, you know, we haven't played it that much. But then, you know, people threaten us with bodily harm if we don't play, <laughs> you know. They want to hear One Night Stand, Beat to Death, and you know, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, we kind of try to pick and choose. But yeah, we play, uh, what else do we play from this album? Jokes on You. Jokes on You. We play, no, we never played, uh, there's one we rehearsed, but we never played. Sometimes we have intentions, good intentions, we're going oh, to play them. Oh, we have the best intentions. <laughs> and then we get to rehearsal and never get to it. Now, the bands had music in a bunch of movies that people may or may not realize. Um, can you talk about a couple of movies you guys have had music pop up in? We were in uh, The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke. Uh, we were in Rolling Kansas with Thomas Hayden Church. We were in... Uh, Blood, Sweat, and Beers, oh, which is a, doc yeah, it was a documentary. We get a lot of placements on TV shows, and uh, our record company in, in LA is, is super aggressive on getting us placed in, uh, you know, all over cable shows and, and other shows and, and, and movies and all that kind of stuff. And it, you know, it helps. Um, what about uh, 
hell with a bullet. Well, yeah, hey. Well, you tell them. You were the star in that. Me? The star? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but we, we're, uh, we got to appear in this movie, not as Rhino Bucket, but uh, called Quantro. <laughs> they fired me. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because when we first, when George first told us about it, I thought we were just going to be in the background, you know, the backup band and, and, uh, for the singer that the movie's about. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, I, I, I was like handed a script, and there's all this stuff in there. So we're, we're like actually acting. Awesome. Which is, what, three lines? Yeah. Do you remember? Do you still remember the lines like this? I remember the last one, but I'm not allowed to say it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, you left that one movie, I, I'm pushing the Wayback Machine, as they used to say in the show. Where's she Wayne's World? Wayne's World? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I should have remembered that one. Um, yeah, no, but that, yeah, we were in Wayne's World, uh, the movie and the soundtrack. Do you ever still get requests to play Rive and Yourself from Waynesboro? We play it every night. You still play it every night? We'll and play it yeah, for a long time we didn't play it because we were a little bit like, oh, we are artists, you know, we play what we want. <laughs> and then we realized that, no, that's just a bunch of BS. It's the band's birthday. There are birthday cupcakes. Wow. That's amazing. Take them. And share them with Rick Brown. Like cupcakes. Yeah, but I love your birthday cupcakes, man. That's all. Share them with all the beans. Okay. She doesn't know us. Uh, so I want to ask you about Monster the Rock Cruise. We had the pleasure of joining you guys, catching your set at the Zebra Lounge last year on, on the uh, Monsters of Rock Cruise, and you guys are sailing again, right? Yeah. Any adventures that you can share that, that you can actually share with our crowd here from the ship? Anybody oh. seasick? Any, uh, no, no, we really got seasick. We were, it was a pretty good trip. Um, Ryan, of course, had to do double duty because he was with us and Kick, so, you know, he's always working hard. <laughs> and a lot, a lot of, of sneaking around, really. Yeah, and a lot of also probably for your, you know, your part, <laughs> trying to figure out, like, you know, where am I supposed to go today? You know, um, it was fun. It was, it was. A, I'm not a big fan of sitting in a floating hotel for four days, because <laughs> after a while, you're basically ready to jump off. Uh, but I, I thought that uh, you know what was cool there is like. Uh, Everybody was positive. I didn't see any, you know, attitudes. I didn't see any fights. I didn't see any of the regular crap that you can see in a bar on a Friday night. I mean, it just seemed like people that were there were really just there to see as many bands as possible. And they were, you know, pretty respectful. And they didn't, when you're trying to eat dinner at 4 o'clock in the morning, because you just, you know, got done with everything, you know, they weren't coming up and you know, telling them that their cousin had sex with your brother. You know, <laughs> You know, that, it was good. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to doing it again. It's going to be a little different this time because um, we're doing uh, uh, something between, I think, well, they're still finalizing, but between seven to nine weeks of club touring in Europe uh, and then going straight to the boat. Now, so we're either going to kick everyone's ass <laughs> or we're going to be completely damaged. No we're definitely we'll be, be yeah, set. we'll be there to witness whatever right. it is. <laughs> now, now, Brian, uh, you mentioned you were playing double duty playing kicks at that time. And we caught Kix's set on deck, and that thing, the ship was, could you feel the ship rocking and rolling? Because it was like the windiest day I can remember. I don't even know, did the wind affect you guys playing in any way, or? Well, more of the ship rocking back and forth. Because I remember a few times, like, jumping off those little boxes, and the ship would come up and meet me halfway. <laughs> like, hey, Ron. The one time Ronnie almost lost it. No, so it was, uh, it was weird. Now he's talking about Ronnie from Kiss because we saw Ron Keel actually lose and he actually fell on this Mar as he was trying to do his set there from Keel. So. <laughs> yeah, I saw some other bands struggling with it, like uh, a couple of bands that played in that theater in the front. They mm -hmm. said, oh yeah, they said it was really bouncy. That theater like definitely <laughs> rocks both figuratively and literally. So. <laughs> Thank you.
seems to be like you're you're like a connoisseur, man. Are you like a, are you a cook or are you just a person that likes to eat? No, I'm an eater. <laughs> no, I cook. I cook too. Okay. I like cooking. I like eating. I like going to diners. I like eating breakfast. One of the uh, one of the things that maybe people don't realize about rock bands, especially when they've been touring this long, is you know we have and Brian even longer is that your day pretty much consists about where you need. <laughs> Uh, we love getting out of California because we can go to Cracker Barrel. Yeah, they don't have those. <laughs> they don't have, and it's just, I mean, like, Cracker Barrel is always consistent. It's great. Look, I'm doing commercial. Um, and it's, um, but it's obviously, it's not a five-star restaurant, but it is, you know, it's just because we don't have it. It's the same thing. I have friends who live in Seattle or they live uh, on the East Coast, and they always ask me to bring an In-N-Out burger from California to them. So, but yeah, please, especially Europe. Our whole life, oh, yeah. you know, our whole life is about. You know, like, hey, where, where are we gonna eat? When we get to Spain. We have the uh, the grilled uh, uh, squid. Yeah, it's called uh, uh, chiparrones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, is there is there one country that you just find it is hard to eat in? Like that you just are over there, you just like oh, I'm not sure I can find anything here. Well, for me, it's uh, some parts of Germany. Like these guys are okay, but there it's a lot of meat. So I get there. Oh yeah, Bavaria, like, southern Germany, yeah. It's like, I have some I, mac I, and cheese. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, there's one restaurant we eat. What did you say? Regensburg? Uh, Regensburg. And they take us to this place next door, and it's this old Bavarian like beer hall with this phenomenal food if you like meat. <laughs> if you don't like meat, it has, and you don't drink, then you can have water and mac and cheese. <laughs> but, they had, but, the, but the menu's in German, and like I'm looking at it, and I'm like, they're, our tour manager is there, and I go, uh, is there anything on here? It's not meat. So she starts reading off this the stuff, and she goes, oh, here's one. It's uh, some kind of like uh, noodles with cheese, and it, she made, it sounds really fancy. I go, oh, I'll take that. And it's macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Whatever Kraft says in German. <laughs> Well, we want to thank you guys for taking the time with thank us you. tonight. We're really excited about setting sail with you guys again in March. Um, anything else huge? Uh, uh, any big shows coming up in the near future that you guys want to highlight? Anything? Or, or? Uh, well, you know, we're looking forward to this tour. Uh, Europe to go back there. Um, we kind of uh, took a well, kind of a break in 2012 from Europe. Uh, had to get uh, some things sorted out. Uh, really looking forward to going and seeing our friends and fans there. You know, really looking forward to coming back and doing that. Uh, Monsters of Rock cruise again. Uh, I think it'll be great. And then we are going to concentrate on getting some more, you know, real touring, you know, get done here in America while trying to get the new album done. Because I mean, I love touring America. I mean, it's still. I like going anywhere there's a 7-Eleven because you can get cigarettes at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's really hard to do in some parts of Bulgaria. So. <laughs> you know. Well, I want to thank George and Brian for taking the time with us. We're real excited about seeing them headline again tonight. Real excited about catching up with them on the ship. So uh, we want to thank you guys for taking Great. the time. Thank Mid -Atlantic you. Rock this is K-Rock, Mid-Atlantic Rock Behind the Bands.